the noble art of settling disputes with swords instead of words, and expressing your feelings through stabbing motions. William I introduced the judicial duel to England in the 11th century, and it eventually came to an end in 1852, when the last recorded English duel was fought. In France, fatal judicial duels became so frequent that from the 12th century, attempts were made to reduce them. Early in their history, duels were mostly single combats fought with swords, the rapier, and later, the small sword. Beginning in the late 18th century in England, duels were more commonly fought using pistols, although fencing and shooting continued to coexist throughout the 19th century. Here is a glimpse into what might actually be the last duel ever fought. The duel was in 1967 between Gaston de Fer, mayor of Marseille, and René Ribière. De Fer yelled, shut up, stupid, at his opponent following an argument in the French National Assembly. René Ribière demanded an apology, to which de Fer refused. So Ribier challenged him to a duel. René Ribier lost the duel, having been wounded twice, but he escaped relatively uninjured. Fun fact, Gaston Defer, the winner of the confrontation, already fought in a pistol duel earlier the same day. It was an age where men would frolic in tight britches, slapping each other with gloves, and demanding retribution. But nowadays, if you even suggest a duel, people look at you as if you've just proposed balancing an elephant on a unicycle. Firstly, one might argue that duels have fallen out of fashion because of advances in conflict resolution. Back in the day, when someone offended you, you couldn't simply block them on social media or send them an anonymous hate comment. No, no, no. You had to march up to them, make a grand speech, and challenge them to a duel. It was a much more eloquent way of saying, hey, your words hurt and I'd like to poke you with a sword. Let me paint you a picture of a good old-fashioned duel from back in the day. When men were gentlemen and fashion choices were questionable at best, Picture this, a misty morning, the scent of gunpowder in the air, and two dashing gentlemen, each with a score to settle. Our duelists would typically meet in an open field, like a couple of sophisticated cowboys minus the horses and Stetsons. Now, the weapons of choice varied. Sometimes it was pistols, like those fancy French flintlocks that took longer to reload than watching a sloth race in slow motion. Other times they'd whip out their swords or some way, way, way over the top weaponry. I mean, who needs therapy when you can just poke each other with pointy things, right? Once the weapons were settled, the real fun began. It was all about the grandiose buildup, you see. A location would be selected, preferably one with ample shrubbery for dramatic hiding purposes. Then, an assortment of witnesses would gather, because what's the point of a duel if nobody's around to gasp and faint at the appropriate moments? And so, the duel would commence, and chaos would ensue. If they chose pistols, they'd pace a few paces away, turn around and shoot at each other with the accuracy of a nearsighted mole. Bullets would fly, missing their mark more often than not, as the gentlemen cursed their luck and secretly thanked the universe for avoiding a lead-induced makeover. If they opted for swords, it was a dance of precision, agility, and avoiding tetanus. They'd swirl and twirl, clashing their blades in a symphony of metallic chaos. Oh, and let's not forget the obligatory seconds, those loyal friends tasked with ensuring a fair fight. They would run around shouting words of encouragement or hurling random insults. But here's the kicker. More often than not, duels ended with neither party hitting the mark. They'd exchange a few blows, realize that dying is a bit of a buzzkill, and call it a day. Brush off their dented pride and share an awkward handshake and walk away. Their reputation's intact, but their honor is still a little bruised. Fortunately, today we have alternative means of expressing our discontent. We resort to engaging in fierce debates over who has the better taste in cat memes, or which superhero would win in a fight. It's all rather civilized, you see. We've traded the thrill of dueling for the excitement of comment section battles, where our chosen weapons are witty comebacks and endless gifts, gifts, gifts. Why bother risking life and limb when you can unleash your snarky comebacks from the comfort of your pajamas? Another reason for the decline of dueling could be the inconvenience factor. Imagine you're in the middle of a heated argument with someone, and suddenly you have to put your busy schedule on hold. To arrange a duel at dawn, you have to secure a suitable location Find an impartial second, not that you can't trust your friends, of course, and ensure that both parties have well-maintained swords or pistols. Frankly, it's easier to just change your relationship status to, it's complicated, and move on. Plus, let's be honest, most people are just not very good with a sword. We've all seen those viral videos of people trying to recreate movie fight scenes and failing miserably. It's just not a skill that comes naturally to most of us. In the colorful world of dueling, legality was as flexible as a noodle made of chewing gum left in the sun for a week. Depending on the time, place, and mood of the local magistrate, so dueling could be anything from a punishable offense to a jolly good time sanctioned by a wink and a nod. From the early 17th century, 
Duels became illegal in the countries where they were practiced. They largely fell out of favor in England by the mid-19th century and in continental Europe by the turn of the 20th century. While dueling was technically illegal, it was also kind of tolerated. Like your neighbor's lawn gnome collection that's slowly taking over the neighborhood, like a miniature invasion. If you survived the duel, congratulations. You were officially a criminal. Yep, the law would swiftly swoop in, like a seagull eyeing your sandwich at the beach, to arrest both parties for attempting to kill each other. The legal implications of dueling nowadays can really spoil the whole fun. Apparently, the authorities frown upon two individuals trying to stab or shoot each other in the name of honor. Can you believe it? Now, if we were to reintroduce dueling, we'd need a comprehensive set of rules, permits, safety gear, and of course, the mandatory waiver signed in duplicate. By the time all that paperwork is done, the disagreement is probably long forgotten, and you'd rather just invite your opponent for a pint at the pub instead. Today, the concept of dueling lives only in the pages of history, reminding us of the complex desire for honor and justice that once fueled these intense encounters. While the era of duels may have ended, their legacy continues to capture our imagination. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed what you saw and would like to pick the next video's topic, please consider becoming a member on Patreon. Link is in the description.